everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News website. Um, we've got another uh, great interview with Ewan Downey. He's becoming one of our regular guests here. Uh, and uh, I got to thank them because they're a sponsor of the website as well. So, um, But what we wanted to talk about today is let's get right into these recent results. Uh, they hit, uh, they announced 17 grams over 3.8 meters, 10 grams over 3.8 meters, 17 grams over 4.2 meters, 25 grams over 5.5 meters, 11 grams over 9.1 meters. This is spectacular stuff that makes underground mines, Ewan. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're on to something. We think we got a tiger by the tail with this zone. It's a it, I wouldn't call it exactly a brand new discovery, but it was uh, drilled more than 20 years ago. There were a few holes drilled to the north of the mine workings on the Granite Creek property by Barrick and Homestake before that. And um, they were never followed up on. So they're the main work that's been done since then really focused on the area where the underground workings were put in. But when we took over the project, we immediately identified that area and said that you know it, it, these widths and these grades are really good no follow-up so we started following those up uh, last year and uh, essentially every single hole we've drilled into that horizon has intersected uh, high-grade mineralization so far and so it's it's looking really good uh, the continuity seems to be exceptional and we're now um, we've added drills we've increased our drill program by 50 percent mainly owing to the success of this. And um, as I said before we started recording, I'm, I'm a little surprised that the market hasn't quite picked up on this as much as I, I think I would have expected by now. Well, you know, from my perspective, you and in these high grade systems, I'm always looking for continuity and for grade and thickness. Um, and it really hits the mark on all of those uh, situations. So you talk to a lot of guys in the market. What, what's what's the feedback, and what do you think they're not getting? Uh, I think right now it's it's really the you know the gold sector has been under pressure, despite even the days it goes up. It it seems to have we have a really good day in gold price, and then it drops down, and it's the the whole kind of gold sector seems to be in a bit of um a bit at a bit of a standstill right now. So there's maybe a bit of a, a buyer shock uh, or, um, you know, the, the buyers just aren't there in, in force. And, and so you can see we've, we've been noted many times is how much insider buying is going on. So we're, we're pretty certain we're on to something good and insiders are, are, are noticing and buying stock. And, and uh, eventually we expect the market will, but, you know, it, it's looking like this, this zone is going to be well over 10 grams per ton average grade. As you said, the the widths are you know generally true widths are anywhere from two to about seven meters, probably averaging somewhere around four. We've traced it over hundreds of meters strike length, now down dip a uh, few hundred meters, and that 25 gram hole you mentioned was our deepest hole so far. So it it just keeps going, and uh, we're going to keep drilling it for the rest of this year. And we we are anticipating this is going to add a lot a lot of ounces to this project by year end. So it's it's pretty exciting and uh, the property's permitted. We have underground, we're, we're underground right now working on the, the auto Adam Peak and, uh, and the OG zones at uh, Proxima the Mine Workings. Uh, and we only have to extend the workings probably another 100 meters at depth, extend them a little to the north and we'll be into the mineralization on what we're calling the South Pacific zone. So it's, it's a pretty unique opportunity. Uh, I liken it to when West Dome was drilling off Kena and look at, eventually what happened to their stock. So I, I do anticipate that the we will get attention for it. Maybe we just need more holes. We've released 11 so far. Maybe it's going to take 22 until people say, wow, those guys are on to something. Well, you know, when I look at it, you and I go to your cross sections and uh, just blown away by how consistent the, call them the red and purple dots are. Um, <clears throat> and that they're really close to the underground working. So you don't have to extend those very much and you're bang into 
bringing it into a lot of high grade. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's like I said, it's right there. It's just below and just north. So it's it's uh, and and the mineralizing system where we're drilling there is a bit different than what we find in the upper mine. The upper mine uh, is interpreted as being splay faults off the main range front fault. And those can have limited strike length and sometimes down dip the continuities off. And, and so as we prepare to start mining the upper zones, we have now mobilized two Cubex drills underground to do the definition that we're going to need to make sure that we're staying on ore. That's something that the previous operator didn't do. And we're making sure we're doing before we start actually pulling scopes. So we've uh, taken a step back a bit to make sure that when we start mining here, we're we're pulling really good grades as as we have in our resource model. Uh, but this South Pacific zone is at the contact. So the most of the other zones are, I'd say, in between, well, in the lower Comus unit, but. This zone is on the faulted contact between the upper and the lower comus. There's the two limestone units there uh, pressed up against each other. And it's right on that contact where we're getting the primary zone. There's, there's multiple intercepts in some holes. We've actually interpreted there's two splay zones, but the main horizon sits right on that contact. And as an example, our last hole, we get a daily update on visuals, what hole looks like. Our last hole we drilled into it our uh, lead geo Tyler Hill um, put a in his quick logs I, or our team in their quick logs we predict where we're going to hopefully hit the zone and it was 1290 feet and we hit the zone at 1290 feet so that was pretty remarkable and uh, so we're well, that that brings up a couple of uh, quite uh, good points one is predictability um, and I wanted to get a little more into that geology. So that that fault is sort is that the plumbing system, and then you get into this softer rock, and it kind of spreads out into that softer rock. Is that what we're looking at here? No, it's it, we've got this fault that just follows right from surface as far as we've drilled it to depth along that contact, but up at surface when we drill through this fault structure or previously they've drilled through this fault structure, the grades are, you know, one, two, three grams. And then you get down about 200 meters and there's the intercepts are typically sort of five to 10 grams. And then below 250 meters is where all of a sudden, uh, all but maybe one or two holes that have hit this, where we interpret this horizon to be under the 250 meter level is intersected 10 grams or better. So it's really, uh, it seems to be really picking up the, um, you know, it's open, completely open at depth. And hopefully it doesn't pinch out as, uh, as quickly as it came at some point, but we've, uh, we've drilled a pretty big dimension so far. And there's another couple of uh, home stake holes drilled about 300 and 500, 600 meters further north from where we are that hit high grade mineralization that suggests that this horizon is going to go for quite a ways along strike and we'll be uh, we're just getting some additional permits to put in drill pads so we can start stepping out to the north and hopefully this gets bigger and bigger as the year goes on. Well it seems as you're getting deeper it's getting wider and higher grade so um, what's how open do you think it could be at depth? I'll use because we're immediately south of the turquoise ridge mine and Turquoise Ridge is one of Nevada gold mines big three. So um, Nevada is uh, Nevada gold mines, which is owned by Barrick and Newmont. If it were its own company right now, it would be the third largest producer in the world. And all of their production comes in and around our property. So the, the number three property that's, uh, or the number three of their big three mines is Turquoise Ridge. And it's in the identical geological environment we're drilling it's along the same major fault to the north. We're on the same, we're both on the east side of the intrusive complex. So if you look at our presentation, you can see Turquoise Ridge is right there. And Turquoise Ridge is between past production or production to date and reserves and resources is a 25 million ounce gold deposit. So we're drilling on the right beside a, a monster deposit. So, you know, I think sky's the limit at depth. And, the real blowout that made Turquoise Ridge, probably 80% of the resource and reserves now, 
occurred at a depth below 2,000 feet. So at about 2,000 feet, they hit this bigger deposit. And um, so that's still a few hundred meters below where you guys are right now. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably two, three hundred meters deeper than we've drilled. And what happened at Turquoise Ridge is the stratigraphy was not vertical, but dipping to the east like we're drilling. And at depth, the stratigraphy flattened out, and that's where Turquoise Ridge was. So conceivably, that could happen here too, and it just hasn't been drilled yet. So that's something in the second half of this year that we're planning on doing a stepping back a bit and testing the system four or 500 meters deeper than we've ever looked before and just seeing if the geology flattens like it does immediately north of us. And if it does, that you know would bode well for how many ounces we should have at the end of the day. Well, we don't have to estimate, but you know, you are in elephant country, you're in the same kind of geological setting. Um, it, it's, I, I think, something you could wave your arms at a little bit there. Yeah, right now we're trying to be a little conservative and say, you know, we're, we're hoping to add a million ounces this year would be a, a good target for us. But uh, hopefully with some bigger step outs during the year, we'll be able to suggest that perhaps it could be a lot more than that. I think our, our target is to take the, the current resource, the underground resource, is just over 600,000 ounces indicated and inferred. And we've stated that we'd like to grow that beyond a million with this year's program. So I'm feeling, feeling really good with this new zone that we're going to achieve that. And um, who knows how much, uh, how much we exceed it by is. Well, is so kind of far it's kind of probably, is it exceeding your, your hopes or is it on in line with your hopes? What do you I'd say it's in line with what I was hoping for. They, you know, there's, I think it was six holes down there. Everyone hit. So I thought, you know, it's a reasonable chance we're going to have a good hit ratio down here. And um, it's not that deep, but like I said, it, it starts to really pick up about 250 meters below surface. So it's not like a thousand meters down. It's only Well, and plus you got all that underground workings there. So it's not like you have to start at surface and work your way down. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's it's pretty close, and if you look at our section uh, that went with the press release, you can see that South Pacific zone is right beside the existing workings. Yeah, that's what blows me away. You you and and then as you follow it, you just keep hitting it. Actually, the the pink dots start to really pick up as you get to the I think it's the south east. South Pacific zone, is that southeast? That's, uh, that's not, uh, the South Pacific zone is to the north of oh, the mine, about okay. due north of the, the underground workings. Um, and it's trending sort of northeast. The strike of the zone is, seems to be trending northeast. And, yeah, and then we have the other. Follow the, the purple pink dots on the OG zone and the auto and it just seems to keep continuing right into that South Pacific zone. Yeah, the, the last week we put out a bunch of really good results from the underground drilling, which is defining the, the auto and the Adam Peak fault areas. That's um, the area on the west side of the underground workings. And since then, we've started drilling the OG side. And in the mine workings, the OG is actually the bigger zone. So if we didn't drill it first. We started drilling it second from underground. And I believe next week or the following week, we're going to start releasing the first results from step out drilling there because the, the OG zone at the mine at depth was completely open. There was a couple of deeper holes drilled years and years ago that hit broad intervals of mineralization. And we've been testing to see if maybe the OG zone blows up at depth too. So that drilling is uh, first couple of holes were just completed just waiting for the final assays on that and we should be. You mean you and like following more of a vertical uh, direction or, or leading to the, um, the South Pacific? Yeah, OG zone is, is pretty close on, the, on strike with the South Pacific. Maybe the OG, if you look at it, if I'm looking due north, the South Pacific zone is actually a little west of it and then trending northeast. It's just that the OG zone is not hosted at that contact. So it's actually primarily in the upper Comus rock unit. 
And, uh, but it had good widths, good grades underground when, um, when the previous owner was underground there. And it was wide open below the bottom level. That's where all that pink is. And so we're drilling. And that under pink continues like you have a setup there that it looked like you drilled four holes off of one setup. And then there was another one hole that went pretty deep. I don't know which number that is, but it had to have hit one, two, three, four different high grade unit, uh, high grade hits there. Yeah, there's uh, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of faulting in this area. So um, I just if, if somebody wanted to take the time, they could go on to Barrick's website, look up Turquoise Bridge. And if you look at their model of the deposit, you'll see there's a bunch of pods. And so the mineralization can be potty and and um, not just one big sheet. Um, and I think that's a lot what they find at Turquoise Ridge, except where it really blew up at depth. But in the upper parts was more potty, like we're finding in the auto OG Adam Peak areas. And but the South Pacific zone, like I said, the, the geological setting being right on the contact is is very different. That bodes well for mining because then visually you can start to follow it instead of needing just following this alteration system and needing except ex extensive cubex drilling in order to define exactly where you're going to mine. And the rock unit. The rock quality so far appears to be improving. We're, we're envisioning that almost all, if not all, of the mining in the upper parts of the operation will be underhand cut and fill mining methods, whereas the South Pacific zone at depth, given the quality of the rocks that we're seeing, in the, at least in the drill core, we, we are thinking that there's a possibility we'll be able to do lo some long hole mining, and that would mean as we go deeper in this deposit, we'll be getting into, I'll just say equally as good grades because the average resource grade is over 10 grams, but equally maybe a bit higher grade. The widths appear to be maybe up to double what we find in the upper areas on average. And the if we can long hole mine it, the mining costs will drop. So that um that that means a lot more profits in the future. So we're we're very, uh, very optimistic that we're we're on to something really good here, and um, I'm uh, pretty excited every day. I look forward to getting our drilling update to see what we hit today. It's uh, we with multiple underground and surface drills going. It's um, we're seeing a lot of internal news every day, so it's at South Pacific. It looks like you're getting good high grade mineralization right in the two faults, the Northeast fault, the auto, and then the uh, Comus contact. Uh, I think it looks like almost every hole hit it close to 10 grams or, or better. Yeah, and I, I, I think I pointed out before we, we started this interview that I, I, one thing I, when people send me, uh, I get emails, I, you know, I play the stock market too. And I say, oh, look at this drilling. And I go through the drill results and you see that every fifth or 10th hole is listed in their press release. So I always say, well, what, what happened to the other nine? Um, if those three good ones were good, what, what about the other ones? What, what were they like? And, and as you can see, other than one hole, every single hole that we've drilled has high grade. And exactly. we're listing every hole. There's hole five, hole six, hole seven, hole eight, hole nine. And, um, and so that's, that's the one thing I like is that as we get the assays coming in, it's, Every hole at the contact is carrying grade, and that's uh, that's pretty remarkable because gold deposits are often spotty. You get a bit of a especially in high grade. Yeah, you get a bit of a nugget nugget effect, but this appears to be pretty consistent. 20, Ten to thirty gram type intervals over sort of three to ten meter core widths, and that's impressive. It's uh, um, it's got to be telling you something about the the whole plumbing system and the, the chance for it to keep following that trend you're seeing. Yeah, I'd say that the main high grade <clears throat> mineralization associated with the faults is in a pretty confined place where the mine workings are. But now as we go below 250 meters, we're, we've essentially tripled the strike length at depth, um, at that depth to the north. So it appears that there could be a picking up in mineralization as we go deeper, but 
um, you know, until we, until we get it fully drilled out, we just don't know where fingers crossed. Well, I can see a big smile on your face, you, and it's got to be because you're in elephant country and, you know, 25 million ounces next door and you're in the same kind of geological environment. No wonder you guys are pretty happy these days in buying the stock. Yeah, and we just started a 20,000 meter drill program at a Ruby Hill property. And um, so we've got a lot of drilling going there. We have no results out yet. Um, the rock units we're seeing in that drilling because the it, the Ruby Deeps deposit was again drilled more than 20 years ago at Ruby Hill. So we're following up on this historic drilling that identified high grade mineralization below the pit. And it's looking fantastic. Like this is a, it's an impressive looking uh, deposit. And I think these two you there. acquired in that deal, right? Yeah, they, well, when we went public, we acquired Granite Creek, which was called Pinson uh, previously. Uh, we acquired it from Waterton. And then when we acquired the autoclave from Nevada Gold Mines, we acquired uh, Ruby Hill at the same time. And that was from Waterton too. So we believe we got the best two deposits that Waterton had and and uh, good for them for buying them when the market was in the tank. But uh, we, we expect that they'll do very well for our company in the future. Well, I've often said you and you're one of the best, uh, one of the top deal makers in this business. Um, you've had takeouts in the past and, you know, even before you did these recent deals, you you acquired projects that, you know, benefited from using the truth machine. So you're you're following that old school kind of uh, path to success. Uh, we've talked about it before that, you know, that's what built Barrick. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, Newmont was built in with discoveries in Nevada too. So the big two biggest producers were built there. And, you know, I, I'd like to think that probably every big company in the world wants to be in Nevada. It's just, it's tough to get in. Um, Nevada Gold Mines owns a lot of the ground and we own quite a bit now. Um, and most of the mineralization as you go to depth becomes refractory. Um, pr getting permits to build a new process, uh, refractory po processing facility would probably take years, maybe a decade. So it's kind of a barrier to entry and we Plus were- Plus big costs, right? What, what would something like that cost to build today? I think the Lone Tree facility that we acquired from uh, Barrick, or I mean from Nevada Gold Mines, was um, probably if you were to rebuild the site, it has a flotation circuit, it's got an autoclave, it has a heap leach project, uh, all the warehousing, assay lab, tailings pond. We got everything when we acquired this project from them. And, and uh, probably if you were going to rebuild it exactly as it is today, I'm thinking 750 million to a billion US. So more than our market, uh, our market value just for the facility. Never mind the fact that in global resources we have uh, over 14 million ounces of gold and 100 plus 10 years of, of spending money. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before you get anything back. Yeah, it's uh, Nevada is a great, great state to work in. Very pro mining. Um, we've been fortunate that the properties we've acquired are either fully permitted or mostly permitted. So we're, we're underground at Granite Creek. We've got the fully permitted operational mill facility. Um, Ruby Hill, we just finished mining the open pit and looking to go underground now. So it's permitted. We're going to start the underground development at McCoy Cove in the current quarter because it's permitted. And then the, uh, the, the Brooks and Buffalo Mountain projects that are the open pits we're planning, hopefully to build later this, start building later this year. Brooks is fully permitted and ready to go and Buffalo Mountain is nearly fully permitted. So we've, we're really advanced when it comes to development. You, you know that every country is getting tougher and tougher on permitting. So having them in hand is, uh, is really invaluable. And that's what a lot of people miss. So you and I got a question for you that, um, you know, you had to do a deal, give up one of your producing that you were a minority interest in. Uh, and uh, how do you feel about that deal now? 
Yeah, well, we traded the our South Arturo mine, which is the joint venture with Nevada Gold Mines, for the infrastructure. But we um, we had McCoy Coal fully permitted, almost 11 grams per ton refractory. We had nowhere to put it. Um, the deposit we were mining, South Arturo with Nevada Gold Mines, was in operation, refractory. They were processing it through their facilities. Um, but we were only getting 20, 15, 20,000 ounces a year off that operation. So it wasn't a company maker. We own 40%. We didn't make the decisions. When is the next phase of mining going to start? They could hold off for five years if they wanted. So we took a non-operating, fairly small producing asset and turned it into infrastructure that allows us to control our own destiny in the state. Heck of a deal, Ewan. Thanks. And uh, so let's let's end it on uh, how's the cash position because that's a question everybody should ask. Um, yeah, right now uh, we have I think it's about 115, 110, 115 million US in the bank, and we're just uh, we announced that we've signed the de de definitive documents with Waterton. I mean with Orion and the financing package. So they've already we've already closed part of it and. We're expecting to close the balance of that here in the coming weeks, and that'll add uh, another 80 million to our treasury. So we're in uh, we're in fantastic financial shape, and we've got very ambitious growth plans. And I think it's really a matter now of the market watching us uh, if we can execute what we say we're going to do. And I'm very confident with the team we built that we will. So are you in a cash position now that sort of handles all of your capex costs to uh, do the the plans that you're working on over the next year or so yeah all of the current underground plans that we've embarked on were fully financed for those uh the granite creek mine we should start delivering material to uh, nevada gold mines at twin creeks because we have that interim processing arrangement uh, hopefully by mid-year this year. So that'll start to bring in some cash flow for the company. Uh, we do have gold production from both Lone Tree and Ruby Hill, which is a, what a lot of people don't know. So we will get, we will be getting gold every quarter, um, on, pretty much from those two sites, uh, residual leaching that's going on. We get about as much gold as we would have got from South Arturo this year. So we're, we're in a, we're in a good position place and, um, We've uh, we've been telling the market we're we're going to build four mines in three years, and now it's just a. Uh, I think really the market's looking at it saying, okay, let's see how these guys can execute. So, and if you execute on that, you and what kind of a production profile would you have? Um, those first four should bring us up to about three three hundred, a bit over three hundred thousand ounces annually, and then the open pit. We're also permitting an open pit at Granite Creek. Uh, we expect to have those permits in hand in say two years, probably a year build. And then in year four, I'd expect that would come online and that should take us up to around 400, maybe a bit over 400,000 annually. And that, what, that puts you up there in uh, some rarefied air of gold producers. Yeah, if you look at the four or 500,000 ounce gold producers, the sort of mid-tier as, as I call them gold producers, their market caps are in the billions. So we're, we're half a billion roughly right now US. So I think there's a lot of uh, upward movements, movement for our company. And um, uh, you had me on the show talking about my stock buying and I've increased my share position since we started trading about eight, nine months ago by over, um, over 1.4 million shares now. Um, so, so you're I, over a half, 500 million or, so, or 5 million or so, aren't you? Yeah, it's uh, definitely my biggest holding in my, my personal account, but I, I believe in what we're doing and I'm very confident in the group we've assembled to, to take this company forward. So um, betting, on, betting on our team that we're going to be very successful here. I always like to see the companies that eat their own cooking, Ewan. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's a great note to end it on. I'm going to wrap it up and if you want to hang around, we can have a little chat at the end. Okay. So there you go, folks. Um, I uh, I have a lot of admiration for you, and I've been watching his career for probably 20 years now. He's he's delivered for me as a stock picker in the past with a couple of takeouts, 
And uh, now I, I really believe that uh, I-80 is, is uh, going to be his biggest success. And why I say that is that, you know, I watched in my early career how Barrick grew, American Barrick was, was known then in the 90s, how it grew from a small producer to a now a household name, one of the largest in the world. And uh, that happened in, in Nevada. And same with Newmont. And now uh, I-80 is following that path and they've got a runway ahead of them that looks like that 300, 400,000 mid-tier producer is within reach. You can see it in the drill holes, you can see it in the workings, you can see it in the uh, processing facility, you can see it in their cash position. Um, they're well positioned to meet that goal. And um, as you and said, all of those companies have valuations in the billions. These guys still have a valuation of uh, around a half a billion. So for those that want less risk in their gold portfolio, but still want a lot of upside potential, I think I-80 Gold is a great company for you to look at. And uh, as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors. And I really advise you to do that homework because I think if you look at their peers and some of their peers are not in jurisdictions like Nevada, um, it will become very apparent uh, what Ewan's talking about and what I'm talking about. So on that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.